Il n'était qu'un petit con, mais elle aimait tant oui. Il n'était qu'un voyou, mais elle s'est éprise du monde qui était beau, qui n'était qu'un gigolo. Il a fallu l'aimer à Saint-Tropez. Elle lui a acheté des trucs et de belles affaires, une jolie montre à bracelet. The coat does you. That strip of overexposed sand and rock runs from Marseille in the southwest to the town of Monton, which squats indolently a few kilometers from the Italian border. Monton is best known for its talent for growing lemons all the year round. And if ever you feel like a lemon, Monton is the best place to come to. Where you find lemons, there are also the well-known lemon squeezers. These helpful and assiduous young men are the boy scouts of the south of France and are forever helping old ladies across the road. Each year, the lemon squeezers endeavor to squeeze dry as many lemons as they can catch. And it may be said to their credit that a visit to Monton is not complete without the experience of watching a lemon squeezer at work. In 1848, the Prince of Monaco lost the town of Monton and then spent the next 12 years looking for it. It was eventually discovered by Napoleon III, who bought it for four million francs. When he was asked why he paid so much, he said that the answer was a lemon. The French Riviera, which occupies the distance between Montan and Nice, features three winding coastal roads, the Grande, Moyenne and Basconge. Here we may find the true nature lover and tourist trudging arduously along the road, heavily laden with rucksacks and camping equipment, spurning disdainfully the noisy luxury of the motor car, and preferring to enjoy nature's delights with simple, unadulterated pleasure. High in the hills above Monte Carlo stands a Roman monument known as the Trophy of the Alps, built by Augustus Caesar in the year 5 BC. The western face bears an inscription by Pliny which has been lovingly restored by a certain Mr. Tuck. Unfortunately, however, Mr. Tuck appears to have restored the wrong inscription, because when this tower was built in the year 5 BC, Pliny wasn't even born yet for another 30 years. Ever since the 13th century, the barbarians have been coming here in search of amusement, in 1705, they tried to blow up the trophy with gunpowder. The remains now provide an excellent viewing platform over the surrounding countryside. The tiny medieval village of Aes and the Vista Aero, a restaurant perched on the cliff, like an eagle in ambush for unsuspecting rabbits. Nous avons de très bons roast beef, du médaillon de veau. Ils here, the weary traveller may eat a simple meal for 15 or 20 pounds and enjoy the local wines. The iridescent rosé brought to Provence in the 15th century by good King René of Anjou, or the charming, seductive red wines of Cassis and Bondor. The tourist is well served by the Riviera, which looks on tourism as its prime source of income. And everywhere the traveller goes to spend her money, she will be relieved by eager, willing, grasping hands. The Corniche leads us on to the old fortified village of Roquebrune, a medieval town which has preserved its picturesque character since feudal times.
The village is crowned by a castle which dates from the 10th century and is the only remaining example in France of the Carolingian type of fortress. It was built by Conrad I, Count of Ventimiglia, to stop the Saracens establishing themselves once more in the area. You will appreciate his success all the more when you consider that the south of France today is almost totally devoid of Saracens. From here, we take the coastal road directly to the Bay of Angels and the tourist capital of the south of France, Nice. The town was founded by the Greeks of Marseille in the year 350 BC. They named it after Nicaea, the Greek word for victory. And in fact, victory was the key word for most of the invaders who did battle over Nice in the succeeding centuries, not the least of which being the war which involved the heroine of the capital, Catherine Seguran. It seems that when in the year 1543 Barbarossa was besieging Nice with his Turkish army, the young Catherine appeared at the top of the ramparts with her skirts raised above her head as a defiant insult to the invaders. Unfortunately, the Turks took this gesture as an invitation and promptly overcame the city within a few days. Since then, the girls of Nice have never looked back. Où va-t-elle Elle se change, elle, elle rentre à Paris, elle prend l'avion. Ah bon, pourquoi oh, Elle doit rentrer pour voir ses parents. Vous restez Oui, moi je reste. Et vous, qu'est-ce que vous faites Je compte rester quelques jours, euh, peut-être un peu plus longtemps. Écoutez, maintenant... Là, être... voilà. Ah oui, là, voilà. and export business of Nice is largely confined to people who arrive and depart in steadily increasing numbers each year. Nice Airport, which deals with much of the trade, handles something approaching a million passengers every summer. Of these, by far the largest proportion are innocent holiday makers, comptometer operators, sociologists, Christian scientists and members of the Chamber of Commerce. A certain number of travelers have business interests in the south of France. They and their associates can receive a sizable percentage of the eight and a half million pounds spent in France every year by tourists. The government subsidizes the industry with 2.4 million pounds. And crime, in particular, confidence trickery, Burglary, smuggling, tax evasion, and art thefts cost another 6.4 million. Reckoning along these lines, the French government estimates to make from the tourist industry a profit of about nine and threepence by the end of the financial year. You depose Ben, dans le centre, peut-être sur les quais, ça serait pas mal. Moi, je vais Est-ce que je peux vous laisser? As evening bien, comes to the promenade des Anglais. Friends bid each other hail and farewell. People get to know each other so quickly here in the sunny south that time flits by with lightning speed and acquaintanceships blossom and die within a few short hours. over the promenade, the elegant hotels, the shops, and the back streets of Nice, and the tourist emerges from her hotel, all freshly bathed and scented, to taste the wild delights of the fun town of the Riviera. In the bistro, on the trottoir, in the clubs and cafes, the jet set throws inhibition to the wind as they drink, dine and dance all night. 
Games like Ludo, Monopoly and Snakes and Ladders are played here, often until the early hours of the morning. Only the lonely people feel out of it. For them, Nice is a town without a heart. When you're alone, there is nothing you can do but drink a solitary cup of coffee and go to bed. Bonsoir, madame. Ah, oh, mais... Toute seule C'est vous, que plaisir, c'est vous. Mais oui, mais... Ah, oh, bah ça tombe bien, je vous cherchais, vous voulez pas venir à une surprise partie Mais comment savez-vous que j'étais ici Bah c'est par hasard, je vous cherchais vaguement. J'ai une surprise partie, bien. Une surprise partie Oui, j'ai des tas de copains que j'ai rencontrés. Of Allez, course, venez. the nightlife of the Riviera is by no means restricted to dining and dancing. There are many other things you can get up to. With the help of a reliable guide, the traveler may look forward to a full and varied evening, packed with fun and games from start to finish. Tourist guides are readily available and may be hired by the hour, the day or the week. But unlike the rates for car hire, the price of the guide goes up instead of down the longer you keep him. Oh, c'est pas un problème, sans conséquence. Alors à l'hôtel, qu'est-ce qu'on va dire Oh, puis tu t'en fiches. Ce soir, on a un peu bu, je vais tenter mon coup, là. Ta réputation, après tout, tes vacances. Il faut que ça marche. Je crois que ça vaut le coup de... Allez, là, faut que je me donne à fond. Vas-y, mon vieux. Il faut la voir, celle-là. Tu te nourris Je suis pas ta mère, en plein coup. Oh bah si, si tu es ma maman. Allez, donne-moi à manger. Faut que t'arrêtes, enfin. Mmh. Arrête. Mais écoute, entre nous, franchement, et puis les autres... Non, puis on va se baigner. Tu as faim Tu n'as plus faim Allez, bon, on va à la flotte. Go. The obituaries of the coast fall into two distinct types. There are the doers and there are the watchers. The watchers spend most of their time wishing they were doers and the doers concentrate on giving the watchers something to look at. Water skiing was brought to the coast by a group of Olympic skiers named Johann, Albert and Walter, who found themselves with nothing to do during the summer months. It appears that one evening, as the three of them were sipping slivervits in the Tyrolean beer garden, Johann turned to Albert and said, Have you seen Walter skiing? And the idea was born. <laughs> The 
principality of Monaco, which has been in and out of the hands of the Grimaldi family like a yo-yo for 500 years, has a motto, non creditur, num quam sperare, tu quoque fili, which roughly translated means, a change is as good as a rest. In the 15th century, Jean II was assassinated by his brother Lucien. Ah! Then Lucien was assassinated by his nephew Bartholomew. Ah! After this, Honoré I was assassinated by his subjects ah! and thrown into the sea. All good things come to an end. And the princes of Monaco thought of a new game and set it up in the casino of Monte Carlo. Here, the bloodshed is confined to the baccarat and roulette tables and is presided over by the guardian angels who are a constant feature of the local architecture. On the Côte d'Azur, cherubs and seraphs abound in every corner and nature must submit to the firm hand of man as he forces his attentions on her, building love grottos and pleasure parks everywhere to satisfy his aesthetic desires. The south of France has many faces, and the green and fertile mountainsides are just as much a feature of Provence as the dense and overpopulated coast. In the hills and valleys of the hinterland, the peasants lovingly cultivate the local produce. Olives, grapes, citrus fruits, and cut flowers. Early fruit and vegetables are grown in the region of Toulon and Yerre. And even if you can't eat it, you can always paint it. Or uh, just leave it lying around the countryside. As we continue our journey westward into the setting sun, we come to Cannes, the founder of tourism in the south. Cannes owes the origins of its popularity to Lord Brougham, the Lord Chancellor of England who in the year 1834 was traveling through on his way to Nice. Since there was an outbreak of cholera, Lord Brougham retraced his steps to Cannes and built the first villa. Soon all his chums started coming over. And before long, the Prince of Wales and his coterie of loved ones had made a habit of spending their riotous winters in the south. During the early part of this century, it became fashionable for the lesser crowned heads of Europe to chase each other up and down the promenade. And with them came the showgirls and dancers, the privileged hangers-on, and the assorted playmates and backscratchers of the idle rich. Tu crois que mon profil est beau? Hmm? Oh, J'aime bien marcher quand on me filme. Est-ce que tu penses qu'il est pas mal, le petit? The next town we get to on our westward journey is jouan les pins known for its magnificent beach of fine white sand and its excellent facilities for sunbathing, swimming and water skiing. Jouan has awakened to a boom of popularity among young people during the last couple of years. It was here that the Romans first conquered the Gauls in the year 134 BC, ever since which time the French have always been an easy prey to the Latin invader. Dawn breaks and finds us continuing our journey to the little town of Saint-Tropez, as it lies still half asleep like a tired film star, overexposed and underdeveloped by the nouvelle vague of the French cinema. The success of Saint-Tropez as a resort is almost entirely due to the devotion of Brigitte Bardot and Roger Vadim, who together created and God created woman here, asked all their friends to stay, had babies by each other, and turned this unpretentious little fishing port into the most pretentious little fishing port in the whole world. Overnight, so to speak.
The town gets its name from Crope, a Christian centurion who was beheaded by the Emperor Nero. The decapitated head and body were then placed in a boat between a cockerel and a dog who were supposed to eat him. When the boat came to this spot and Trope's remains were left intact, a lady named Celerina saw the whole thing in a dream and built a sepulchre on the site for the corpse, which was later pronounced a saint. Gentil journey. A prominent place on the quayside is taken up by a statue of the town's hero, Admiral Suffren. Suffren distinguished himself, not only against the British in Ceylon, but also in account of his weight and his gout. After an enthusiastic bloodletting in 1788, however, he promptly died of anemia. Est-ce que tu penses? Viens. <laughs> the Mate Foundation at Saint Paul houses an extensive collection of impressionist and abstract paintings by artists who lived and worked in the South. Here are works by many famous artists, notably Cézanne, Dufy, Braque, Miro, Marc Chagall, and sculptures by Giacometti. Dushpa. The reason so many artists come to the south of France is on account of the uninterrupted sunshine and the calm and gentle disposition of the sea. Saint-Tropez is known familiarly to its patrons as Saint-Trop, which is also French for too much. Here, too much is made of the things one can't do enough of elsewhere. People talk too much, eat too much, and sleep too much. Also, things cost too much. Nevertheless, the tiny port has become one of the most fashionable places to be seen, to buy clothes and to have affairs in the Mediterranean. Every year, more and more celebrities come here to get away from it all and to meet the people they were all getting away from. In the year 1592, Saint-Tropez repulsed the Duke of Savoy, and in 1963, it disgusted the greater union of American motherhood. In 1637, during a hectic battle of the Thirty Years' War, the quarrelsome inhabitants of the town managed to drive away 21 Spanish galleys. On the 16th of May each year, there is an event known as the Act of Defiance, in which all the men, women and children of the town fire guns at each other. In fact, it was not until August 1944, when the Americans took over Saint-Tropez from the Germans, that any foreigner actually felt safe enough to come here. Another moment of discord is experienced by art lovers who visit the Fernand Léger Museum at Biot. Not everyone agrees on the merits of Léger's work, and heated debates on the value of his abstract aesthetics help to keep the memory of Fernand Léger alive. Oui, mon fric, tu vis dessus. The museum features a mural in mosaics from a design by the artist himself. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for him, Leger died before the museum was built and never saw this immortal tribute to his work. In the quayside shops of Saint-Tropez, there are many bargains to be picked up by the casual passerby. And the art of the pick-up 
is practiced with skill all along the Azure coast. With this go the other highly developed trades and industries that have enjoyed immense success over the last 20 or 30 years. There are many professions into which a young man may go if he is keen and good with his hands. But possibly the pickup is still the most favored byproduct of the tourist trade. The job is no easy one, but a young enthusiast will find the rewards more than adequate if he's prepared to keep his nose to the grindstone. Under French law, the income of a gigolo is not subject to tax, which can be a great asset to a young man saving to get married. As with every business, the young salesman finds that there are sometimes complaints from dissatisfied customers who want their money back or goods returned. And so we bid farewell sunshine and gaiety of the happy south, the blue skies and the azure sea. Not goodbye, perhaps, but as we say in French, good riddance to the sunny shores of Juan les Pins, the carefree days in Monte Carlo, Villefranche and the Ile du Levant, where the nudists gamble joyfully amongst the cactus plants. On one's journey homeward, one meets people from all walks of life. And if you're wise, you let them walk, as the French say. This year, next year, sometime, never, if you're clever. We may be forced to say greetings once more to the sunny south, with a smile, a tear, and a fond, an oh-so-fond, hello. T'es là enfin. Bonjour, chérie, t'en vas-tu Ouais, c'est bien, c'est bien. Ah, oh, ce qui fait bon se revoir à la maison. Ah, tu es plaisir de te voir. Sur la croûte, ça rue, le gars est Toi, bien. Toi, tu es bien. Sans regard, à l'amour qu'une brise, le monde, il était beau. Il n'était qu'un gigolo. Il a fallu l'aimer à Saint-Tropez. Il a fallu l'aimer à Saint-Tropez. 